Hi everyone, welcome to the Underwater World YouTube channel. I'm Jeff and I'll be walking you through how to service a scuba regulator. In this video, we'll only be talking about the first stage, but in future videos, we'll continue on with the second stage and complete the entire overhaul of this regulator until it's complete. Today, we'll be working with an Aqualung Titan regulator. Uh, it was manufactured prior to 2009. We'll be taking the entire first stage apart, all the way down to the smallest component. We'll be cleaning it and replacing all of the life limited parts. It's important to remember that the parts that we replace are life limited, not dive limited. So even if you haven't dove as often as you may have wanted to, or maybe not even at all, these parts still need to be replaced every two years. If you purchased your Aqualung Titan regulator from an authorized Aqualung dealer, such as Underwater World, then those parts are part of the free parts for life program. That means that Aqualung will give us a service kit to put into your regulator once every two years to replace those life limited parts for free. It's also important that on that off year, you get that uh, regulator inspected by an authorized service technician. Inspecting the regulator will make sure that it's free of corrosion, will make sure that the filter is clean, the hoses are intact, and that the regulator is set to the manufacturer specifications uh, for a safe dive and for safe dives up until we can replace those components uh, every two years. So let's take a look at what we have in front of us. Okay, in front of us we have the schematic to the Titan series from 1999 to 2008. That's the regulator that we'll be working with. All of the highlighted parts on here are the parts that are included in the parts kit. These are the life limited parts. They're things like high pressure seats and backup O-rings and diaphragms for the, uh, for the first stage. They're the parts that we have to replace every two years. Remember that those O-rings can be very, very small as you'll see, and those O-rings are responsible for holding back uh, a whole lot of air pressure, in some case thousands of pounds of air pressure from going through the internal components of that regulator. So there are the parts that are gonna be replaced and they're the important components and why it's important that we replace them. This is what the first stage part kits look like. We'll show you the second stage in later videos, but you can see here, this is a high pressure uh, seat here. Here's a high pressure O-ring, uh, some filters, and a whole bunch of O-rings in the diaphragm and the washers in the back as well. We'll dive into this a little bit later after we get the regulator apart, taken apart and cleaned. Uh, but this is what is given every two years to a, uh, a diver who has purchased an Aqualung regulator from an authorized dealer. And these are the parts that get replaced into your regulator for free. This is the regulator we're working with. It's uh, by far not a new regulator. This one will be a really fun one to work with. There's a lot of corrosion on it. You can see the, uh, the nut itself, uh, or yeah, the oak nut itself is very corroded. We'll show you how we clean that up and uh, how we make it uh, serviceable for another year through inspections and uh, through overhauls. We'll take everything apart. It'll look just like it looks like there in the, uh, in the diagram. We'll lay everything out and then we'll start cleaning it. So uh, let's get a little bit uh, into this regulator. Okay, so you can see that we've gotten the regulator apart, at least the first steps. Uh, we haven't taken apart the internal pieces yet. They're still all in there. Uh, but you can see we've gotten the yoke apart, uh, the yoke retainer. Uh, the yoke nut itself, and you can see a lot of corrosion on there. Uh, that corrosion is what makes it rough when you screw it in, uh, when you're tightening it onto the tank valve. It also makes a very loud squeaking noise, uh, and that's all due to the corrosion that's on there. You can see that corrosion carries through right into the threads of the yoke itself. There's not much down here on the yoke retainer. Uh, there's a little bit of white in there, so that's a little bit of corrosion, but for the most part, that's pretty clean. We move over to the spring retainer. We've gotten that apart. Uh, there's some corrosion around the threading there. Uh, a little bit inside, but not too bad. Just a little bit around the threading, a little bit on the inside there. Uh, the spring looks like it's in pretty good shape. Got a little corrosion on the sides there, but for the most part, the spring's in pretty good shape. Uh, the spring pad itself, that's not too bad. You got some corrosion on the back, which will get cleaned up there. Uh, but aside from that, uh, it looks like it's pretty good. And then we have the adjustment screw. This allows us to adjust the intermediate pressure of the first stage of the regulator. Uh, you can see same thing, just a little bit of white corrosion around there, but for the most part, it's in pretty good shape. So that's where we stand right now. We still have all the internal parts here to take out, which we're gonna go ahead and do next, and we'll talk about them before starting our cleaning. 
Okay guys, you can see that we've gotten the first stage all the way apart now. Uh, there's nothing left in the first stage. We've taken out all of the O-rings, all of the seats, everything that's important in the first stage. This is just the big body now. You see a little bit of corrosion around the nut there. We'll get that corrosion off during the cleaning process. And again, there's a little bit inside there and that should all come out without a problem in the cleaning process. Looking at the components we pulled out of there, we have the filter C-clip that this holds the filter in. We'll inspect our filter, though it is a replaceable part and we are going to replace it. We inspect it because it tells us about the quality of air that's gone through that tank. If it's uh, blue uh, or green or brown or black, it tells us what's in there. For instance, if we saw a lot of green on here, we'd know that salt water may have entered the regulator at some point uh, or it may have entered and gotten stuck in this filter and it's now starting to corrode the filter. Orange tells us that there's rust in there. Blue and black tells us that there's carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide in the air that you're breathing. So that we replace this part, we always look at it because it allows us to uh, let you know what quality of air that you're breathing out of the tank. This filter's job is very important. It's very, very small, and it filters all of the air that comes through that regulator. So if it gets clogged, it starts to restrict the airflow very dramatically in the regulator. And with just small amounts of corrosion on there, it can restrict airflow up to 75% will eventually restrict it all the way. To tell you what a filter that looks dirty or corroded looks like, here's one right here. This is a conical filter, it didn't come out of a Titan regulator, but you can see a lot of corrosion on that. Now if you were just looking at it like this, which is what the customer was seeing before we took it apart, it doesn't look that bad. But once we pulled it apart, we could see that there's a lot of corrosion on it. To give you an idea of what it should look like, here's a conical filter that's relatively new and you can see that it is much, much cleaner with no corrosion on it. Almost shiny, little bit of corrosion on the very bottom of it uh, because it wasn't brand new, but it's, that is a clean looking filter. And then one more filter here, you can see this is all the saltwater corrosion that's green in color. Uh, and that tells us that that filter is being uh, exposed to a lot of salt water. It's not being rinsed properly and uh, it's probably being put away with either the dust cap off or with salt water on the filter and then the dust cap put on trapping it there. Uh, this filter, you can see, corroded all the way down. We'll go back over to our regulator. Keep moving down here. This is the spring block here. The spring block will hold some of these springs on, putting the tension onto the, uh, the filter. It'll also hold these two O-rings. These are high pressure O-rings. Uh, and you can see right here, this is the seat. So the seat itself will eventually sit into that spring block and those O-rings uh, will go around it to help, uh, help provide a good seal. This is the crown. The crown came out um, and appears to be slightly corroded as well, which tells us that at some point salt water has entered this regulator, uh, whether it was a lot or not. It's real hard to tell. There's not a lot of corrosion on there, but there's definitely some corrosion. So at some point, salt water has entered this regulator. Uh, there's an O-ring that goes around here. We've already removed that. You can see the corrosion also in between where the O-ring goes and the crown itself. Uh, this is the pin and the pin support. Both of them put pressure onto the diaphragm or the diaphragm puts pressure onto them. Uh, pushes up to the pin, pushes into the high pressure seat and adjusts the airflow uh, to the regulator. What's cool about that, this parts kit is this, this, these O-rings here, the high pressure seat, this O-ring here, this ring and the diaphragm are all gonna get replaced. That's everything that's gonna get replaced in that regulator. You can see it's over 50% of the internal components we're gonna replace. And if you bought it from an authorized dealer, it's a free replacement kit for all of these parts and very critical parts like the filter and the high pressure seat. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this regulator up. We'll show you how we do that. But first, we're just gonna get rid of all of this and throw it right out because there's no need for it anymore. All right, we're just getting ready to clean all these parts. These are all the parts that we're gonna clean. Every single one of these is gonna get dropped into this ultrasonic cleaner here. Ultrasonics are a really good way to clean metal, especially from corrosion. And, uh, and I'm gonna take a second with this uh, yoke nut here and show you how the ultrasonic works. We'll first go ahead and we'll turn it on. Now remember the ultrasonic is going to take all that corrosion off. We're gonna let it go into its little uh, setup here. It'll get a little bit quieter once it does. There you can see the corrosion that's on. As soon as I dip that, well, let's do this. Let's shut it off for a second. 
And let's show you what happens if I dip that in there. So there's not much change to that yolk note once I dip it in there. Now I can leave it in there for a while and you'll see a little bit of it come off, but for the most part, there's not much change. If we go ahead and turn that ultrasonic in, uh, on again and dip that yolk nut back in there, you'll see that corrosion start coming off right away. Once we show you that, we'll go ahead and put the rest of the components in there and we'll let it sit in there for about 10 minutes as it starts to clean the product. <laughs> to the ultrasonic cleaner for about 10 minutes. We've taken it out of there and put it into a freshwater bath to rinse it out of the cleaner that we use in the ultrasonic. We'll let it sit in there for about five minutes or so just to get it real rinsed out. And then we'll go through, uh, we'll dry it very well. Uh, we'll use compressed air to dry every component of that so we're not putting back uh, wet components into the regulator. Uh, the corrosion is all off it. Uh, however, you can see there's some pink, uh, it looks like pink from here at least. Uh, on the yolk nut and some other spots where we found the corrosion. Uh, that's because that corrosion was left on there for too long. It's done some damage uh, to the chrome plating and, uh, and unfortunately uh, it is now more susceptible to corrosion in the future. Uh, but the good news is the corrosion's gone. We'll talk about how we can protect a little bit of that, at least the yolk nut, uh, from corrosion in the future and then uh, we'll go ahead and start reassembling it. While that was in the ultrasonic, we went ahead and opened the parts kit. We organized the parts kit. Uh, we counted out everything in there to make sure everything that we were supposed to have was there. We're not gonna need all of these parts in the parts kit. Uh, this parts kit is for Titans and con shelves. Uh, so a lot of these parts are for a con shelf regulator, not just a Titan. Uh, I've highlighted the parts that we're going to go ahead and use, and we'll go ahead and just get rid of the other parts that are in there. Uh, to give you an idea, I did pull this filter uh, that we had in there back out of where I threw it uh, just to compare the filters for you so you can see the difference. Uh, this is the new one uh, and that's the old one. So though we didn't detect a lot of corrosion on the old one. Uh, you can see it's clearly got some clogging going on. It's a different color uh, than the filter next to it. Uh, the filter next to it's much cleaner uh, with no evidence of clogging uh, or anything like that. So uh, so the new filter is obviously the one we're going to put in, so we'll go ahead and get rid of this one again, but I just wanted to show you the difference in the filters. All these other components are going to get reassembled on there uh, once we get done with drying this. So in just a few minutes, we'll uh, come back, we'll have this all dried out, laid out, and ready to be reassembled. Everything's dried out now. We use compressed air to dry everything. We let it sit out here for a few extra minutes after that just to make sure any little bit of excess water evaporates. Uh, but everything looks to be dried off here. Move the parts kit off to the side. And we got rid of the uh, the parts that we weren't going to use, so they didn't end up in our way. Uh, but that is what's up there. Down here is all the original parts again. We'll talk about a little bit of this corrosion that remains, or uh, what looks like corrosion, but it's actually not. You can see there's the discoloring of the yolk nut. Uh, if you remember what that looked like before, and uh, I'll try to put a before and after up there uh, for you. But if you remember what that looked like before, uh, there was a lot of green on there. Uh, there's a lot of crud. Remember when we put it in the ultrasonic bath, it uh, came right off as I was still holding it. Unfortunately, this uh, regulator is over 20 years old, uh, probably closer to um, well, almost 25, uh, I would say. I guess it's about 20 years old now. Uh, so it's starting to get a lot of damage from the corrosion that has been on there uh, in the past. And that's what we're seeing right there. We're seeing the chrome plating begin to uh, lose its effect. Uh, with the corrosion and it's starting to come off. This isn't corrosion anymore, but because the chrome plating is gone, uh, it's more susceptible to corrosion. And that happened pretty much everywhere that uh, we had a lot of corrosion. You can see inside there, it's not green anymore. It looks a lot better than it did, but you can see it's starting to look a lot more now like bare metal and thus it's a lot more susceptible to corrosion. Uh, the good news is the corrosion is gone. Uh, the bad news is that we're going to have to keep watching this. Now, these parts are replaceable. They're not in the Free Parts for Life program. Uh, so if you're a regular
articulator looks like this and you decided that you want that chrome plating back on, uh, we could obviously get this part back in and replace it and make it as good as new. But all in all, for a 20-year-old regulator, uh, it looks pretty good. It came out looking nice. It looks like it's definitely been used before, uh, but the corrosion's off of it. It's not shiny anymore like it used to be, uh, but it definitely is going to be serviceable again. And you can see anywhere that we've uh, had a nick in the chrome plating, uh, we're getting that discoloration of the metal now. But all of the corrosion is gone. Uh, if you remember before, we were talking about how that yoke uh, and yoke nut screwed in and made a lot of noise. You can see now that the corrosion's gone. It doesn't do that anymore. It's very smooth to go in. It's very quiet. We're also going to put a thin bead of silicone on that uh, yoke nut, and that'll just help protect that metal for a little bit longer. Uh, it's not going to fix the fact that the chrome plating is gone, but it'll give you a little bit longer without picking up too much corrosion. We're not going to do that to all the internal components here, but we will do that to all of the O-rings. We're just going to put enough uh, silicone on to make them shiny, and then we'll go ahead and install them. So when we get back, you should see a uh, mostly installed regulator as we work towards putting this back together. We've completed the reassembly of the Aqualung Titan regulator here. All of the O-rings that are inside have a small amount of silicone grease on them to help protect them uh, over the course of the two years that those parts may not be replaced again. Uh, we did put a little bit of silicone on the yoke nut here, and you can see it's very quiet now and it screws out very easily. Again, the chrome plating came off. Uh, that's just over 20 years of having some corrosion on there, and uh, it's just an older regulator, and that's the kind of stuff that will happen to it. But all the corrosion itself is off. It's brand new filters, brand new high pressure seats, and a brand new diaphragm on the back as well. The regulator itself looks pretty good. Again, it looks like a 20-year-old regulator, uh, but that's really the only uh, visually wrong pieces with this regulator is it's some of the chrome plating is starting to come off. Internally, it operates like a brand new regulator. We haven't factory tuned it yet. We'll do that once we complete the uh, teardown and cleaning and reassembling of the second stage components of this regulator, which we'll probably do a little bit later today and get it into the next video. We did have a few O-rings remaining on that parts kit, but don't worry, they're part of the port plugs and the second stage hoses. So we've put them aside. We're gonna replace those O-rings once we do the second stages, and that'll complete the uh, the entire overhaul of this regulator. So we're just waiting for that and then we'll go ahead and factory tune this regulator. The Aqualung Titan itself is a pretty good regulator. This is an older version of it. The newer version is a lot more compact than this, a little bit lighter weight. This is pretty heavy, but they're both real good workhorses. They've been in the Aqualung line for about 25 years. They're solid regulators. Uh, they're very, very durable. They're good for clean water, warm water. Uh, the newer one's a little bit better for travel than the older one because the older one's pretty heavy. Uh, they breathe pretty good. Uh, they're not quite as good as the top of the line Aqualung regulators, but for the most part, they're great regulators. I think the biggest downside to the Titan series of regulators is that there's not an environmental seal kit on here. Uh, the environmental seal kit would have protected the back of this from getting any of the corrosion that we saw when we took it apart. And there's also no ACD or auto closure device, which is an Aqualung patented device that goes right over top of the filter. That seals automatically when the regulator is not on a tank and it protects the internal components from getting any salt water or any water at all in there if you forget the dust cap or just if anything drips in there. Remember when we took this apart, we found that there was some corrosion on the inside and, uh, and the ACD would have prevented that. I think they're the two biggest downsides of this regulator. This one itself only has one high pressure port. The new one has two high pressure ports and it does have four low pressure ports. So uh, it's good for a lot a variety of different types of diving that you're going to do. Again, I would do, I would try to keep it to clean water, warm water diving. That's really what it was designed for. Uh, once you get into cold, dirty water, you're starting to get outside the realm of what the Titan was supposed to be used for. Uh, but again, the Titan's a workhorse regulator, so if that's the kind of diving you're doing, take a look at it. I'll drop a link for the Titan uh, below. You can learn a little bit more about it by going to our website and uh, obviously do some research on Aqualung's website as well. I'll also drop a link to the Legend series regulators down below. The Legend comes with the auto closure device. Uh, you can compare the Legend to the Titan. The Legend is a better regulator, so it's not a fair comparison, but you can see some of those features that you get with a better regulator, such as the auto closure device and the environmental seal kit. And I'll also drop 
drop a link to our service department. You can leave comments for us in the, in the comments section. And if you'd like to get your regulators or your BC serviced by Underwater World, uh, there's a form on our website where you can go ahead and send us uh, your regulators. We'll do exactly what we just did here. We'll tear them down, we'll clean them up, we'll put new parts into them, and we'll uh, reassemble it all, factory tune it, and send it back to you. Safe diving, guys, and thanks for checking out the video.